Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jenny and today I'm going to have a review for you of this very interesting product. If you've heard of the Silly Sponge, you'll know exactly what this is. This is the Swisper Silicone Blender Sponge. I saw this at Walmart and it was only like $5 so I had to get it and try it out. Um, I have opened it just to touch it but I have not tried it out yet so let's go ahead and open it. Um, this is what the packaging looks like. It just comes with one and then on the back it tells you how to use it. Um, it was a it was awful getting the, trying to get this thing open and it's in the floor. So here it is. It's very squishy. I have never tried the Silly Sponge or any of the variations of the Silly Sponge. So I'm not sure what the texture of it is, but um, this one is extremely squishy and extremely flexible. As you can see it can do the worm. So it's very squishy and very soft and um, I'll do one half. I'll do this half with the Silly Sponge dupe and I'll do this half with my um, Sigma F80 flat top kabuki which is really dirty I apologize um, just because that's how I normally apply foundation so it'll be interesting to see if this um, is supposed to give you more coverage actually let me read it says Swisper silicone makeup sponge puts an end to wasted makeup the blender is designed to not absorb makeup dirt or oil making this the most hygienic option for cosmetic application to use it, apply half the normal amount of makeup to either side of the silicone blender and spread onto face, using a padding motion to blend makeup for an airbrushed appearance. The last beauty accessory you will ever need for applying or blending liquid cosmetics. So, um, I think I'm going to apply it with the fat side as opposed to the flat side. So my face is already primed and as you can see I have my eyes and my eyebrows done. To start I'm going to go in with the brush side and I'm going to be using the Revlon Colorstay Combination Oily in the shade 250 Fresh Beige. And how I do that is I just take it and put a small pump on the back of my hand and then I just dab it onto my face. I'm also going to use this sponge thing and I'm going to try to apply concealer with it too. We'll see how that goes. So here goes the brush. So here is the brush side and then here is the spit side of my face with nothing on it. So you can see the coverage is pretty good. It's not completely full coverage but I mean I knew that when I bought this foundation. I don't really like full coverage foundation so this is how it normally looks and I, I enjoy how this looks. I do have redness in my face naturally um, but usually in this area I can get it to cover up with concealer. So moving on to the Silly Sponge side it says to put it directly onto the blender and with half of what you normally use I don't know if that's half or not but here we go try to get you a little bit closer so it says to tap too It's horrible around my nose right here. You can see that I can't really get it into the creases of my nose. So that's not that great, but I don't know. It might have made it a little tiny bit fuller coverage. And I mean, obviously, I need more because I have a big face. We'll go up here this time. Oh no, I got it in my eyebrow. Maybe this would be easier if I didn't do my eyebrows already. Because I could go ahead and kind of get it in my eyebrows and then not worry about it. Because now I have to worry about going around them. I don't feel that I'm using less product because I'm going in with the tinier dots so then I have to go in and fill my cover my face more. So I think maybe if I use like my regular amount on the first go, maybe, I don't know. But so I need a little more going down the neck to match or to blend it. I mean I don't think it looks bad. It doesn't look bad, it does look better on the nose, but I could go in with a brush and fix that. 
Um, but that just kind of makes an extra step as opposed to, you know, just being able to blend it out with this. If you are wanting like a cleaner option, this would totally be the route to go because you can just run this under hot water with some soap and it cleans up perfectly as opposed to a brush or a sponge that's going to kind of soak everything up, soak up oils and face gunk. So this would be a more hypoallergenic way to go if that's something you're interested in. And this was only uh, $5 at Walmart, so if you even just wanted to try it, you could totally just go try it for a couple bucks. And then if it doesn't really work out for you makeup-wise, this is so squishy and fun, it could just totally be like a stress ball. It is so cool to just kind of squish. So I do think it's a tiny bit more full coverage on this side, so that's interesting. I'm not mad at it. So okay, I went around my nose with my, my brush, and I do think it turned out a lot better. Up close, I mean... You can kind of see my pores a little bit more than with this, but I think once I put concealer on and I go in with a sponge, because I am not for sure how I feel about this with concealer, but we'll find out. Um, I'm going to go wet my sponge and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm going to test the Silly Sponge dupe out. I don't, I just want to call it a Silly Sponge. I know that's not what it is. It's a silicone blender, so it's not like the Silly Sponge brand. So I'm going to test the Silly Sponge blender out for a concealer on this side with that side of the foundation that we tested it out on and then I'm just going to use my Eco Tool sponge on this side so I'm going to go ahead and do it first. I'm going to be using the NYX HD concealer in porcelain for this and I'm just going to apply it like I normally do. The nose is going to be hard so I'm just going to go ahead and do the nose with my sponge. Okay, so now that I have this side done, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side, same exact way, but I'm going to do less because that's what it says to do, so less. Now just going in, patting it in. Okay, yeah, I apparently, it's not that easy on the forehead. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, like, so please, if you do this, don't do your eyebrows first, because that looks like a hot mess. Okay, so here, oh, hold on. So here is the difference. Um, I don't hate the way this blended out. I think it blended out fine. Like, it looks okay, it does. But I think this looks a little more smooth and a little more clean as opposed to this. And the forehead part, now that I'm looking at it, looks absolutely awful up close. Like, right in here, it just kind of looks cakey and bad. So, I'm not sure about that. Um, but I'm going to go in for a second coat under my eyes and see how it can build product. And I know this one blends and builds product well, so... This is an awesome sponge if you're in the market for a new sponge. Whoo, that's a lot of product. Oopsie. Okay, making it work. This is good for, like, if you are cleaning up eyeshadow. This is, like, a really good sharp edge, as you can see. It, like, cleaned it up real sharp and nice. Okay, so I think it looks fine from a distance, like I'm sure to you it looks great, but up here you can totally see all my pores right here where you can't really see them on this side. So I think if you have larger pores around your nose and stuff like I do, I don't know that this is going to be your go-to, maybe for like the rest of your face, but then go in with the sponge and then just kind of like clean up those areas. Um, unless you have like a pore filling primer or something you could use before. I personally don't like pore filling primers, I don't think they work that great. Okay, so now I have my eye look finished and the rest of my face finished, and so now I'm going to give my final thoughts on this crazy little sponge blender. 
Um, I think that it does, I'm looking in the mirror just to double check, I think it does a decent job, it really does. Based on what you can see in the camera right now, you can't really tell the difference, but, but in person, I can see all of my pores right here and on my forehead, and normally when I blend out my concealer and foundation with a brush or a sponge, I don't get that. So I don't know that this is completely, it's not blurring. It does make it slightly more full coverage, so if you're wanting your foundation to go a little bit further, I mean that might help out. Um, but to be completely honest, I don't know that I'll, I will continue using this. Um, I will like squeeze it and stuff because it's fun to like play around with. But I don't know that I would continue using it to blend. I think it's just something fun that you can play around with and tr test out. I mean, it's basically like a novelty toy at this point. As a blender, it's fine. And if all of my brushes and sponges were to disappear, it would get the job done. It really would. But it's not nearly as flawless as I personally would. Um, like for it to be but it's not it's not bad I don't know I don't want to give it a bad review because it's not bad but is it my favorite absolutely not so that's my final thought on this this is five ish dollars I think it was more close it was closer to six it was like five seventy something maybe um if I can find it online I'll link it down below so you can check it out I think I got it at Walmart it might be available other places but I know for sure it's at Walmart. So that was my review of the Swispers silicone blending sponge. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more, feel free to subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.